Okay, guys, uh, I want to move beyond our discussion of momentum as it relates to impulse today and uh, spend a little bit of time talking about the next topic related to momentum, which is uh, the conservation of momentum. Okay, so this is going to be a topic that I think uh, I think it would probably feel fairly familiar to you um, in that uh, we had talked about the conservation of energy and the conservation of momentum is, is pretty similar to the conservation of energy. So first of all, let's just remember um, what we said about momentum. Um, momentum, we abbreviate with the letter P, and it's equal to MB. So let's just keep that in the back of our minds as we start to deal with uh, the conservation of momentum. So what momentum conservation says is that the momentum of a system cannot change, right? That's what this word conservation is all about. The momentum is conserved, which is to say that the momentum can't disappear and momentum can't come from nowhere. It has to remain intact. The way we express this mathematically, the mathematical expression is this. This is a, a Greek letter which means sum of, not sum S-O-M-E, but sum as in S-U-M, added together. So this is right here, this means sum of, sum of. So sum of, the sum of the momenta, M-V, initial, Momenta, by the way, is the plural for momentum. So if you take all of the momentum of all of the individual starting pieces and add them all together, that's going to equal the sum of the momenta, mv, at the end, final. Okay. So don't get too tripped up by the sum of. You may have seen this in a math class before, but this just means you add up. So if you've got two objects, you add them up before, and you add them up after. If you've got three objects, you add them up before and add them up after. So I might say something like this. The MV of object A at the start plus the momentum MV of object B at the start has to equal the momentum MV of object A at the end plus the momentum MV of object B at the end. Okay, so this is the sort of another way of expressing, no, I'm not going to do that actually. This is the one I want to put in the box. This is the law of conservation of momentum, and it might end up looking something like this right here. This is, if you had two objects, A and B, it would, it would take this form. And again, the idea is you can't really be losing momentum. The momentum has to be transferred. So let's, uh, this is, again, this is similar. When we, when we talked about energy, we said potential energy initial plus kinetic energy initial equals potential energy final plus kinetic energy final. So it's a similar kind of form. So to illustrate this, let's th think of a pretty simple example to illustrate this. Let's imagine I've got, here, this is a skateboard. That's what that is right there. It's a skateboard. And we've got somebody on the skateboard. Here's this person. And they're holding on to a ball on the skateboard. So this is a person holding on to a ball on a skateboard. And let's imagine initially, um, let's give this person a name. Uh, this can be, this person right here, this can be um, Jerry. This is Jerry. And this is the ball right here. This is Jerry's ball that he's holding. So let's say that the mass, let's come up with some numbers. The mass of Jerry is 50 kilograms. Just to make life easy, we'll give it a nice easy number. The mass of Jerry is 50 kilograms. The mass of the ball is 5 kilograms. And let's say they start from rest. So V initial is 0. So here Jerry is, and he's just hanging out on his um, skateboard, holding his ball, not moving. And then Jerry decides that he's going to throw the ball. Okay, so Jerry's going to throw the ball now. So here's the skateboard. Here's Jerry. And now Jerry has thrown the ball, so now the ball's over here, and now the ball is moving. So let's say that the ball is going that way. Let's say it's going this way. The velocity final of the ball is 10 meters per second. So Jerry's thrown the ball, right, this way. Well, intuitively, 
we can understand what's going to happen to Jerry on the skateboard. If Jerry's on the skateboard and he throws the ball forward, he is going to go backwards, right? This was, we used to talk about this in terms of Newton's third law. We said that, um, you know, if you imagined, we talked about being in outer space. If you were in outer space and you um, threw an object forward, if you threw a rock forward, you would go backwards. Similarly, by from the perspective of momentum conservation, um, what we can say is, if we think about it, initially the momentum of the system, since the velocity is zero, right? The velocity initial was zero down here. Since the velocity was zero, the initial momentum is zero. Well, now what we're going to say is, if the initial momentum is zero, the final momentum must also be zero. Meaning that if the, if the ball is given a positive momentum, Jerry must be given negative momentum. So maybe we can just intuitively think that, yeah, Jerry's going to go back. But my question is, what is Jerry's final velocity? Right, that's the question I want to, I want to address here. What is uh, Jerry's final velocity? Okay, well, we can use momentum conservation to do this, right? Here's our, here's our form. The total momentum initial has to be equal to the total momentum final. So let's set it up. I already said that the initial momentum is zero, right, because the V initial is zero. But let's set it up anyway, just so we know what the setup looks like. So I'm going to say the momentum initially, and by the way, initially, think about it, initially there's only one object. You can, you can treat these, if you want to, as one object. Or you can treat them as two separate objects. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to say the momentum initially, let's say the momentum initially um, of, of Jerry initial plus the momentum of the ball initial equals the momentum of Jerry final plus the momentum of the ball final. Okay, I've chosen to treat these as two separate objects, Jerry and the ball initially. You, you could treat them as one object. Well, right away, we know, we can go ahead and plug in the numbers, but we know the left-hand side is going to be zero, right? We have the mass of the ball is five, or mass of Jerry is 50. So we say 50 times zero plus the mass of the ball is five times zero equals, so we can already see that's going to be zero, the mass of Jerry, 50, times his velocity, V. That's what we don't know. That's what we're looking for. Plus the momentum of the ball, 5, times the ball's velocity, which is 10. And I'm choosing to call this, again, positive 10. We need to be very careful about directions in our, the way we label directions. I'm choosing to call this positive. So for my problem and my world, this direction to the right, this is the positive direction in my world. You could choose to call that the negative direction in your world. It doesn't matter. I'm calling to the right positive. So now let's follow through here. This whole left-hand side, 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 equals 50V plus 50. Move the 50 over. Negative 50 equals 50V. Divide both sides by 50. V equals negative 1 meters per second. Does it mean, now let's think about this, okay, so Jerry's moving at one meter per second. What does the negative mean? Well, in my world, the negative means that he's going this way, to the left, which we already said was the case. We already said intuitively that if Jerry throws the ball forward, he's going to recoil and go backwards. So it makes sense that Jerry's velocity here is negative. The negative in this problem, in my world, means negative one meters per second left. That's what it means in, in my world. You could have called this backwards if you wanted to, for instance. So that's a quick illustration of this concept of momentum conservation. It's a, it, it's a relatively straightforward concept. Um, but again, the devil's in the details. You've got to be very careful of keeping track of all the different objects before and after. You've got to be very careful about your individual velocities when they're positive and when they're negative. Um, but if you're good at taking care of the details, if you're good about your bookkeeping, the, um, the, uh, the problems can be um, relatively straightforward to solve. Uh, that's really all I want to say in terms of introduction to momentum conservation. Um, 
hopefully this is a little bit easier than what we were doing before when we were discussing energy. We'll, we'll have a chance to practice this next class.